When the program started in 1970, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had never closed above 1,000, let alone 10,000. But it finally accomplished this in 1972. Not long after, though, it went into its greatest swoon since 1929. And as the Dow Jones Industrial Average indicates, the market's downhill run was virtually uninterrupted. By the end of the week, the closely watched Dow Average had dipped below its previous 1974 lows to a depth it hadn't seen since October 26, 1962. Few other price indexes can make that claim. The week's loss was more than 41 points to 577.60. As usual, fear soon beat greed by a landslide. But in fact, the Dow never again traded at so low a level. Still, the wise guys sneered when a few prescient optimists talked of much better times ahead. Edson, some people incorrectly regard you as a bear because you were correctly pessimistic at certain key junctures, including 73. But in fact, you've just given us a pretty optimistic viewpoint. And I've heard you T talking about even higher figures for the ultimate future. Do you still see 3,000, 4,000, 5,000? Oh, yes. Every generation uh, has its big bull market that blows off. We had in the 20s, we had in the 50s and early 60s. We'll get it in the 80s and 90s. H how high are we going to go? <laughs> <laughs> I would say there's a better than even chance that within six, seven, or eight years, we will see the Dow Jones Industrial Average sometime above 3,000. In October 1981, Eight months before history's greatest bull market began, I interviewed a seemingly bizarre guest who turned out to be an uncannily accurate forecaster. I'm a little confused. You said we're in a bear market, but earlier you said we were going to be in a bull market. When, when do we get out of this bear market and into that bull market? The end of the bear market, the earliest I can count it, is about August 26, 1982. It might be a little later. W will we go lower than we've been between now and then? Probably. But uh, I'm not one of these 600 boys. I think uh, 750 to 770 is more like the range of the final low. August 26, 1982. <laughs> now, how do you pick the day like that? <laughs> and can you tell me precisely what time Eastern I use about time? seven or eight methods. The count from the middle section, the standard time spans, which appeared in the Encyclopedia of Stock Market mm -hmm. Techniques. But usually, uh, picking the exact day of a low or a high is usually the, done by the count from the middle section. Your predictions are so specific and so long range that I think the remarkable thing is not that you're sometimes wrong, but that you're ever right. I think it's absolutely <laughs> incredible. Well, even if you don't know the count from the middle section from Count Dracula, you have to admire the late Mr. Lindsay. The market took off almost precisely on his schedule. Six years after his appearance, on the eve of what became known as the crash of 1987, there was another famous bullseye prediction in the other direction. I haven't been looking for a bear market per se. I've been really in my own mind looking for a crash, but I didn't want to talk about it publicly because it's like shouting fire in a crowded theater and there's other ways to play it. You just tilt your strategy negatively and you shut your mouth. I only look for a brief decline, but a vicious one. Marty had it exactly right. A week later, after the worst crash since 1929, I offered a little reassurance to terrified investors around the globe. Okay, let's start with what's really important tonight. It's just your money, not your life. Everybody who really loved you a week ago still loves you tonight. And that's a heck of a lot more important than the numbers on a brokerage statement. The robins will sing, the crocuses will bloom, babies will gurgle, and puppies will curl up in your lap and drift happily to sleep, even when the stock market goes temporarily insane. And now that that's all fully in perspective, let me say, ouch and eek, and medic, and once again it transpired, the end of the world really hadn't arrived. The Dow not only regained what it had lost, it doubled and doubled again and kept on rising. 
but as always with investing, there were occasional brief interruptions. Some seemed to hurt worse than others. Good evening. I'm Louis Rukeyser. This is Wall Street Week. Welcome back. Well, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio. There we were, jogging along blissfully toward 10,000 on the Dow, when we fell into this huge hole and got battered pretty badly. Were you there too? Did you get hurt too? Gosh, I'm sorry. But just knowing that the misery was shared by so many nice people has me feeling better already. How about you? Again, I reassured America that patience and perseverance would bring profits. And what do you know, they did. Will we ever have bear markets again? Of course we will. But as this program has always pointed out, the way that most people are going to make the most money is by buying quality for the long term, not by trying to outguess the market by the kind of in and out trading that periodically seduces the unwary. We've always tried to keep you ahead of the curve on genuine long-term trends. And one of the ways was by offering the kind of expert, incisive analysis of key industries that had previously been available only to millionaires. Our guests and panelists have peered into some remarkably accurate crystal balls. Charlie, how serious is the energy crisis? Lou, it's large. It's going to be with us for a long time. It's going to be a fact of life which we have never experienced before, which is going to change our way of life and the future of our industrial society. Frank Capiello, Alan Ehrlich of Corum, New York, says he's looking for what he calls undervalued growth stocks. And he'd like an opinion of companies involved in the video games and video recording industry. Can you give him an answer live? Well, I think so, Lou. Uh, video games is the rigging of your television set to uh, play electronic hockey or electronic uh, tennis. And uh, it's a growth area. Three million sets sold uh, last year. That's up ten times from 1975. Uh, but it's a tricky area. And uh, the company I like in this area, and I think there is growth here, uh, would be a company called Warner Communications. Uh, this is a company that not only has a fine subsidiary, Atari, which produces the games, but uh, also has other things, motion pictures and so on. Uh, selling at six times earnings, I think it's undervalued. Video recorders. This is an entirely new area, about a year old as far as the residential uh, home market is concerned. The leader here in uh, taping TV shows and showing them again on uh, set is uh, Sony with its Betamax. Uh, fine, uh, fine operation, but I much prefer the Matsushita system, which RCA will market very shortly. And um, it's a good way to play the, uh, uh, the system. Uh, and RCA may be a good turnaround candidate. I think the movie industry for the next, oh, let's say three to five years in terms of theatrical uh, viewing in theaters, I believe it's going to continue to be approximately flat. In other words, two and a half to three billion dollars a year will be spent on it. However, I think that the actual viewing of movies is going to increase dramatically as it has been doing over the last five years. This is going to happen on video cassettes. This is going to happen on pay cable. In five years, what's going to be the most significant difference in TV from today? In five years, what's going to be the most significant? There will be four major networks. Fox will be the fourth? With a news operation as well? Yes. Wolfgang Demisch, who has just been made a vice president of Morgan Stanley, is making his fourth appearance in four years on this program, which shows what we think of his consistently highly rated analyses of aerospace and defense stocks. On his last appearance as my guest in May 1980, I asked him what further events might be anticipated on the international security scene, and he replied, and I quote, well, God only knows, Iran invading Iraq? Libya trying to bump off President Sadat, various things which affect our interests fairly directly. Wolf, that kind of precision in public forecasting is rare anywhere on any subject. What does your crystal ball tell you now about the international scene? Well, I'm hopeful peace will break out as we proceed during the course of the year. <laughs>